Dave Smith here. Uh, this video is about large format lenses. Uh, it was suggested to me by uh, somebody who subscribes to the channel, so thanks for that. And if anybody else has uh, ideas they'd like to see videos on, great, let me know. Love to hear it. Um, so the this uh, this question was about large format lenses and it's actually a good question because uh, and I'm surprised that I haven't thought about doing a video on it uh, myself because it's frankly a minefield <laughs> you know when once you get into large format and particularly when you get beyond sort of 5 by 4 uh, or even beyond 10 by 8 um, it, re it really becomes difficult uh, so I thought I'd talk a little around it, um, try and give you some uh, ideas and suggestions, uh, the sort of problems I've had with these things, and it's many. Uh, I only actually have two uh, large format lenses myself right now, and I think that might become uh, a bit clear. There's a robin over there, so it's distracting me. Anyway, I'll try and stay focused. Um, so, large format lenses. Let's focus on what's large format first of all. Um, in in general, people take it to be great any size of film that's larger than five by four. So five by four and uh, upwards. And frankly, if you're shooting five by four, uh, you hardly need to uh, to worry too much about. Uh, the lenses. There are some considerations that you need to think about and we'll come to those um, but your big problem comes when you're getting into much larger formats because then the lenses get uh, really expensive or they can get really expensive. There are some um, affordable options and I'll talk about that um, but, they, but more than just really expensive they, they become kind of difficult to uh, to find. They, they, there, there aren't that many of them so let's uh, let's delve in and have a little look. Uh, I'll, I'll put some closer videos of these uh, in as well, so you can get a closer look. Um, but by and large, by and large, <laughs> pun not intended. Um, large format lenses tend to come like this. Now, this uh, what they are is that there's a plate here that mounts into your camera. Um, and I, I may get one of those and show you how that mounting works when I do some close-ups. But this square plate mounts into your camera. Now this particular plate is a Lindhoff Wister uh, size plate. Um, you also get Sinar size plates and as I say I'll show you that a bit later. So if we look at this lens here, so what we've got is uh, this, this bit here, this bit is the front element this bit is the back element and this bit in the middle this big bit that's the shutter now there are loads of um, makes of shutter uh, but nowadays uh, modern shutters tend uh, I believe to be a uh, copal and this is a copal 3 shutter that's the largest size you get uh, because these lenses are, are pretty big uh, so if we take the front cap off there's the element take off the rear cap. Uh, now you'll never forget to do that because when you're focusing you you focus using uh, a ground glass screen at the back that the lens projects its image onto. If you've forgotten to take one of those off you'll just see blackness. So <laughs> nothing to worry about there. Uh, so that's the lens. Now these lenses are absolutely uh, pristine. Uh, I have no idea how old they are but they will be um, they will be reasonably old, um, but they're in absolute mint condition. Uh, and I would suggest that if you're buying these, that's what you want to look for. Make sure your lens is good. Now this particular one is uh, a Nikko a Nikko W, so it's um, it's uh, made up of um, uh, glass elements that give a wide. Uh, field of view. Uh, it's 240 mils and it uh, opens up to f5.6. Stops down. <laughs> Wait for this. If you, you know, if you if you're not a, f a large format user, this will be a surprise to you. Stops down to f64. Uh, okay. 
So that's the that's the basic setup of the lens. There's a, a shutter in, inside there. I'll show you that when we get to some close-ups. Let's put those back on so that's protected. So that's the Nikko wide um, 240 mils. I have that for my 10 by 8 type size, 10 by 8, 5 by 4 those kinds of things. This one, now this is quite an exotic uh, specialist lens, this is the Nikko M 450mm f9 lens, so it's, it's much slower than uh, than we di than digital users uh, might be used to. Um, f9 is actually a very slow lens, uh, but this lens has huge coverage and that's what makes it particularly sought after. So again, uh, front and back elements, and I think you can see, let me just put the back element back on here for a moment. Um, I think you can see that uh, every... I'm just going to compare these side by side. So take those off. So every part of the 450 is much smaller than every part of the 240 mil and that's because the 240 mil is a wide angle uh, construction okay uh, so the 450 mil uh, rather smaller uh, but substantially more expensive this one is worth about 300 pounds this one is worth about six seven maybe 800 pounds depending on the quality um, and again, my uh, my example is uh, is mint. Okay, so that's the basic setup. Um, let's talk about uh, coverage because I did say uh, this has huge coverage, and that's what makes it uh, very sought after. And when you are looking for a large format lens, <coughs> excuse me, there are uh, I would say. Uh, two major considerations before you buy the lens. One is, will the lens cover the format of film that your large format camera uh, uses? So the 240mm uh, will cover 10x8, but it won't cover my ultra large format camera, which is 12x20. The Nikko will probably cover up to, I want to say 16x20 will definitely cover my 12 by 20 uh, frame on the ultra low, large format camera <coughs> excuse me probably haven't had enough tea yet um, so coverage is one now that piece of information can be really difficult to find it is out there you do your Google searches and you will come across it and the guys on the forums for large format are incredibly helpful and incredibly knowledgeable uh, about these things so go go onto the forums and ask if you're looking for a lens and you and, and you're having difficulty in checking out the coverage of this or that lens that you've seen on eBay for example so I know that uh, this will cover 10 by 8 so it will therefore obviously cover 5 by 4 and 5 by 7 uh, it might get slightly bigger maybe 11 by 14 but I think you'd probably be strolling at the edges by then uh, this will cover probably up to 16 by 20 and it definitely will if you've stopped it down a little same with this to 11 by 14 so <clears throat> Uh, so that's one consideration. Will, you know, will the lens actually cover the frame that you want? And that that can be quite tricky when you get into the larger formats. So what's the other consideration? Well, the other consideration is what's the bellows draw on your camera? All right. So uh, you know, I said here that this will cover 10 by 8, so it will obviously cover 5 by 4. True. This will cover 16 by 20 ish. So. So presumably you could use it on 5x4. Well, probably not, um, because it's a 450mm lens. Now what that means is that you have to get that lens 450mm away from the film plane to focus at infinity. Um, now if your uh, subject is any closer than infinity, you have to get it even further away. Now 450mm, that's nearly half a metre. That's, uh, that's a long way from the film plane and so you're, you want to make sure that your camera 
will be able to move the lens that far away from the film plane and that's your bellows draw. Now a 5x4 with a half meter bellows draw probably not so easy to come by maybe some of the signars with the extension bellows would manage that and then you could use this on 5x4 and it would be a tremendous lens on 5x4 uh, but that is that is your other consideration <coughs> so so that that's the sort of basics of, of these lenses now let's let's talk about uh, uh, other aspects if you are uh, looking to get into ultra large format uh, these lenses can be really expensive and also that's really slow f9 now that's okay if you're shooting landscape but what if you want to shoot wet plate wet plate collodion uh, portraits then you need a really fast lens because <coughs> good heavens um, you need a really fast lens because wet plate collodion is uh, an incredibly slow uh, film type. Uh, it's probably something like uh, ASA 3. You know, so you think about uh, your digital camera and the sensors in that. And you can wind the ISO up to, I don't know, what do they do? Feel like 52,000 ASA? Well, wet plate collodion is 3. And that's really slow. So you need a bright sunny day, you, you go outside, some people do this with flash but oh my word, this, the power in those flashes is huge, it's like a bomb going off in somebody's face, <laughs> so ideally outside, but you want a really fast lens, you want something that's maybe uh, f3.5, now let's think about that, alright, so you've got this huge camera, uh, you need a massive coverage from the lens, so the lens is going to be huge, uh, and they do make them, well, they don't, well, kind of, there is a maker uh, who I believe is making uh, bespoke lenses, um, very expensive, but, you know, doable, not, not ridiculous, um, but these are, um, these are really ancient lenses, these are your Dalots and, uh, and such from the sort of uh, early 19th century. And um, my word, they command a price. So you can get these lenses, but they're massively expensive. Uh, and they're very quirky as well, you know, they don't necessarily have a look that everybody would like. So they're, they're available, but massively expensive. But you can also buy, uh, you know, made now, uh, this guy in America makes them, and I think his website is something like Ultra Large Format Lenses. Uh, if you Google that, I think you'll find him. Uh, he makes um, meniscus lenses. Now, the, and, and they, these come with Waterhouse stops. Now, meniscus lens is basically as it sounds. It's more or less a single element that's just shaped like a meniscus. Um, very simple. Uh, but actually quite effective and you, he, he can make those uh, in quite fast apertures I think you can get I think you can get uh, 16 by 20 coverage at maybe f5.6 now that's that's still a stop and a half slower than f3.5 but you know it's, it's not disastrous so and and they're incredibly cheap they're maybe a couple of hundred dollars um, so they're around. Now a Waterhouse stop, is, um, let's talk a little bit more about these lenses because these particular lenses are in a Copal 3 shutter but you don't have to have them in a Copal 3 shutter, you don't have to have them in a shutter at all and then they're called lenses in a barrel and literally because the front and rear elements are connected by uh, like a barrel, just an, just an empty cylinder. Uh, and the point there is that very often you're finding, you know, if you're if you're shooting a landscape and you're on f64 on these lenses, what is this one? Whoa! So this uh, f9 uh, 450mm stops down to f128. Um, <clears throat> I wonder what the diffraction's like there. But if you stop them down to that kind of uh, level, your exposures are going to be very long. And you can exp you can expose just by literally just by covering with the lens cap because your exposures are so long. So you don't actually often 
need a shutter with these kinds of lenses they come in what's called a barrel uh, and that's a, that's a whole other class of, uh, of lenses and there's a whole bunch of lenses that come in barrels that were once uh, on process, what, what are called process cameras and they were part of the sort of uh, magazine uh, well, magazine production process really um, so there's, a, there, there's quite a lot of options in this, in, in this field but I would say that your two main considerations are well, will it cover is, is, does the lens provide coverage for the uh, format that you're using and what's your bellows draw how far out can you extend your bellows so I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop the video at this point and I'm going to uh, bring the camera right in and show you some uh, close-ups of these and I'm also going to just uh, show you the uh, the mounting plate that you would get on your camera um, so let's have a look at that okay so here we are uh, I'm a bit of a disembodied voice now but I hope you can see these two things uh, well enough to follow through the operations so first of all the uh, I'll just put this to one side and use this one the um, scales are repeated top and bottom I think you can see them there uh, there and that's the shutter speed and this is kind of the uh, top like so you can see there's a little red arrow there pointing I'm on eighth of a second at the moment let's change that there we go so click stopped and nicely damped I think Okay, it goes from one second all the way down to 125th, and then there's bulb and there's timed. So that's the uh, shutter scale. <coughs> uh, over here, we've got the aperture scale, and this lever here selects your aperture. Okay, and there's a little red arrow there as well. Uh, this lever cocks your shutter this one fires the shutter next to it is the shutter release cable socket next to that is the x-sync socket for firing your flash guns that's a pc cord connector okay and then we've got this little lever here let me show you what that does take these off and what this does is manually manually opens the shutter now that's so you can focus. You open the shutter, projects the image on the ground glass, focus your camera, and then uh, don't forget to close that again afterwards because otherwise you're going to expose your film before you're ready to expose your film. Cock your shutter, fire it, good to go. And uh, let's uh, change this to a second. Let's pop the shutter. There it goes. Okay. Uh, so that's the operation, that's uh, what these things are made for and in very good condition. This one, uh, identical because they're both in Copal 3 shutters except for this is f9 to f128, this is f5.6 to f64. Um, so about the same range, just slightly different values at the top and bottom end, but other than that absolutely identical. Okay, now let's see if we can get these into shot. So this is this is the Sinar size plate. The hole there is so this is the front of that plate. So the this this whole lot here, front element of the lens, copal shutter, would mount onto there, and then the rear element of the lens would screw in at the back to hold the whole lot to, together. And there's also I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, but there's a there's like a retaining ring here so you can unscrew I'm not going to do that but you can unscrew the um, front and rear elements from the shutter and the whole lot won't fall apart because this retaining ring here holds it all together I hope that made some sense so that's a Sinar size shutter these are Linhoff size shutters now my camera will take those but because my two lenses came uh, on these Linhoff style boards I also got myself uh, an adapter plate 
you can see there are two lugs at the bottom and this um, thing here so when this is sitting on my camera this locates into those lugs there like so and then that just locks into place and then that's ready to go on the camera okay so that is the operation of those lenses I hope you were able to see all of that uh, anyway I hope this has all been of some interest and some use if you are thinking of buying into a large format system and you're not sure by all means drop me a line and ask very happy to help uh, I have been at this for decades and lenses are a bit of a minefield when you first uh, get going my strongest advice make sure you buy one that's uh, mint uh, because they do keep their value um, if if they're in good if they're in good shape. So there we go. Hope that's all been f some value. Bye for now.